After spending a few days solo traveling through the south of France, I met up with my best friend who lives in Brittany in the northwest region of France. Laura became my international roommate in college and after one semester of exploring all over Los Angeles with a few trips in between, we became close friends. She even agreed to book a trip to New Orleans with me after just knowing me for a week, so that was pretty brave. We had the best time downing beignets, dancing to jazz music, and cruising through the bayous. Fast forward three years and I needed a new destination to fix my headspace post-lockdown. I spent the summer with her in France, traveling all over the Brittany region, taking a road trip through the countryside to the French Riviera where we spent some time before checking out Alsace and the charming gingerbread houses along the Route de Ball. This was my first real experience with slow travel and it completely changed my thinking process about visiting new destinations. The premise of slow travel is that you're exploring a place over a longer period of time, almost as if you were a local. Shopping for food at grocery stores, taking public transportation, purchasing from small businesses, packing a capsule wardrobe, and doing laundry along the way. She even attempted to teach me how to drive her manual car so we could go on longer road trips, but let's just say it was a disaster. Now, whenever I get the chance, I come and visit Laura and her family in Brittany for as long as I can to experience the region more in depth and appreciate taking my time to just exist in such a beautiful place. I spent just over two weeks here this time and she took me to a few of my favorite places I've come to love over the last three years. The next morning, I woke up in Rennes, the capital city of Brittany, and after she finished work for the day, we wandered the city streets before popping in a pizza place for dinner. I've come to know the city well over the last few years and can easily say it's one of my favorites in all of France. But in true Brittany fashion, there was stormy weather on the way, so we only wandered for a brief time before needing to take shelter in our chosen restaurant for the evening. The next day, we did some shopping in the city center before the rain started and then picked up some groceries on our way home for our apero, which is drinks with appetizers before the main meal. One of my favorite things when visiting somewhere new is checking out the grocery stores, and when I say French markets have it all, I'm not joking. They also always have a section for local goods and produce, which makes my heart so happy. You can learn a lot about a place by the local products on offer at these stores. It's also so beneficial to spend more time in a foreign country if you want to learn a language and all of its nuances. I swear I know more French slang than actual proper French after just listening to Laura's conversations with people. Slow travel really is the best teacher because it makes you focus on the little details and pay attention to each conversation in a way that forces you to be present in the moment. You'll also notice that you don't feel the pressure to be constantly productive, but to enjoy your time and share each moment with those around you, whether it be strangers or friends. Connection and communication are a deep part of the French culture, especially during mealtimes. Some meals last for hours as you take your time between each course to share memories and happenings throughout the week, usually beginning with an apéro and everyone is invited. That includes neighbors, close friends, family relatives, friends of friends, etc. And don't forget to make eye contact during your tours or there will be consequences if you know you know. I've also learned much more about the French culture just from observing over time like how they're not explicitly rude. There are some cultural customs that exist and if unaware or ignored can be perceived as rude from their standpoint. There are a few things you can do to be much more well received such as saying a simple bonjour to a shopkeeper when you enter their place of business. Even speaking a little bit of French and addressing those providing the service for you can go such a long way and your effort will be much appreciated by the French people. I'm often sad thinking about what my life might be like if Laura and I hadn't met because she's taken me to so many incredible places throughout her country that I may never have known about otherwise. Like Saint Malo, a stunning fortified city on the Atlantic coast with gothic style buildings and some of the best ice cream I think I've ever tasted. I can't get over the bunting covered streets or the small shops selling crepes stuffed with any sweet filling you desire. This town really holds a special place in my heart and I'm so grateful to her for showing me around. Before I knew it, it was time to head home and I was already desperately missing the hefty amounts of quiche and galette I'd consumed over the previous weeks. It was so nice to slow down and enjoy the beginning of summer here in Brittany with my best friend and I'm already looking forward to our next adventure together.